dun 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 here is the truth dun 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 this is the truth it's still called that right um here's today's news it's quite dominated by this image uh don't matter what paper you're looking at you will be looking at a photograph taken by Bradley Cooper the actor of a lot of other famous people you have to scrutinize them a bit to sort of know who they are but like what's interesting about this is really all they want to do is print a photograph of famous people so they have to go the truth about Oscar's selfie that made Twitter crash. What is the truth about? I mean, how did, did this? I mean, what's going on? Well, I think it's pretty self evident that someone held up a camera. <laughs> and then The Guardian, see, look, I was thinking about The Guardian, I like sort of, like if I was to choose a newspaper that I've got an allegiance to, it would be The Guardian. I've written in The Guardian, I think of it as sort of kind or something, an Edward Snowden thing that it done. But look, it's still talking about the same sort of rubbish, I mean, it's still, I mean, like, Daily Mail, like, where's the real choice? This is what I sort of mean about that sort of, like, the cultural and political sphere. Was a list selfie just a stunt for the sponsors? It almost certainly was, actually, because uh, the next day there was a tweet from Ellen saying, uh, you know, oh, I've got a Galaxy phone. Would you like a Galaxy phone? And I notice here it was a Galaxy phone. So... I mean, the Daily Mail is actually right. <laughs> there is a truth <laughs> behind that, and the truth is that it's a yeah, that it was probably a staged corporate event, which is a shame because I, I suppose like of these people, have you ever met any of them? I mean, I know Ellen. I've met Ellen. She's a sort of a nice person, but she works. She has a chat show, so she'll go, you know, and the talk show is sponsored. Alone, will have a relationship with companies like Samsung. And so, yeah, I guess this, right, so even this, like, that's because the thing about it, I suppose, like, the selfie phenomena is we can all do it. Even this now is shot on very accessible, even this is, uh, is shot on accessible technology. So I suppose if we find it appealing that, the, uh, that, uh, that these Hollywood actors are accessible, but of course they are all just ordinary people. And, and, and really, I suppose what this is a story about is becoming clear is that behind the bonhomie of the photograph, behind the jocundity of the Oscar ceremony itself, jocundity, the, sort of the, the glamour, the glitz, it's like, really, it's just selling us constantly an idea. And, like, you know, like to, and it's not like you can just sell products, you need to sell the entire context for products. You have to sell the concept of glamour, you have to sell the whole thing. So it's like, so that the movies, the newspaper, all of it creates a frequency of consciousness that's constantly spellbinding you into a state where a galaxy phone seems like a good idea. But look, back to this business with uh, like the, 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 the Guardian, which is like a, a sort of, I kind of like, when you actually look at it as a, for like a newspaper, it's sort of it's equally bizarre, it is a story. Little Chinese babies get their hair done. That's weird, isn't it? The Guardian, you think, oh, that'll keep us informed. They sort of, you know, that uh, Glenn Greenwald, sort of, they wouldn't give over their files to the government. Little babies, look at those guys, get their hair done. One baby sad, one baby happy. That's weird that you're telling us this. Then, as you sort of make your way through the paper, <laughs> mouse comes out of bag. <laughs> What do you mean a mouse is coming out of a bag? The thing about this, right, is like, do you, like, they'd look, they're not, right, breast cancer. Now, all right, Chris, breast cancer is obviously an important issue, but do you for one second believe that the sun have gone, we've got to say about breast cancer? We have, haven't we? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's everywhere, the bloody thing. Right, well, is there anything we could do? Uh, what about we use page three girls? No, what the sun have done is, look, it's... Fucking really getting hard to justify page three girls now, 2014. People have really had enough. What if we said it was to help cancer? Oh, that's a bit low, isn't it? <laughs> Could we do that? Yes, I think we can. It's about breasts. So they'll literally do anything to keep page three going. Like they'll say it's to stop people being pedos. Don't you think if people see adult women's knockers, maybe then they'll nonce less kids? Oh, thank you, the sun. Punish Putin! Russia marches into Crimea and our gas and petrol prices go up. I think there might be considerably worse consequences than that in the long run. A reminder in case we need one of how fragile our supplies are. Where's our supplies? Where's my bloody supplies? And how urgently we need to secure energy future free from flaky foreign powers. 
Oh my God, it's literally holding up the establishment. Even the sun, who all its frivolous excuses to show knockers, is going, we are going to have to have a war for resources. Is that the practical reality? Can, could we find a better way? I mean, isn't all of the actual information indicating that we need to make radical change, like there's the, the climate change, ecological meltdown, wars in the Middle East, wars in the Crimea? Well, this proves one thing. We've really got to get into fossil fuels. Oil is inexhaustible. Let's get in there and secure that stuff. International sanctions could damage the first by bringing its economy to its knees. So it's depressing to learn Britain may be too feeble even to back them. Sanctions and kicking Russia out of the G8 just might bring Putin to his senses. It's not giving you news, is it? It's giving you opinion and a sort of a big, sort of mad, sort of spectacular landscape. I suppose the construction of a newspaper, a bunch of people sat around in a room, there's the people that are the sort of the proper foreign affairs people, well what are you going to be talking about? Obviously we're going to be talking about the Ukraine, well how are we going to sort of make it relevant? Well, it can't be just by telling people because they all, they'll have got it off the internet if they're interested, alright, we'll just make it sound like it's a fight between two geezers in a pub car park, then no, so we've got to bring them to their knees, we don't want to look feeble, and then the rest of it, it's just st stacked with gash about Hollywood photos on Nigella Lawson. There's the argument is that, oh, they're giving us what we want, but I don't know. So if you feel like the stronger, more dominant cultural forces should be taking responsibility for raising the consciousness, raising and elevating our expectations, not lowering. So I suppose through the sort of um, miasma of cultural ephemera, you can see human truths in it, like we are interested in sex, we are interested in status. But there's so much opinion that you're not really able to glean any kind of truth or any information from it. Because, like, you know, like, it is frightening if there's conflict with, with a powerful nation. Normally, we like to have pretend wars with countries that can't do anything, like Iraq or Afghanistan. Those countries will do wars with them. What? Russia? Shit! There's fucking loads of them! <laughs> so, like, really, all of the, like, everything that we sort of. Whatever we're reading about, whether it's the Ukraine or the Hollywood selfie or breast cancer awareness, which is really sort of poor light pornography, is a, a particular frequency of consciousness is being consistently broadcast at us. One that's sort of a, uh, it's very, it's, it's distracting and diverting. I'm frightened when I read about the Ukraine. I'm stimulated and titillated by this Hollywood image and Bradley Cooper and Ellen. I like looking at women's boobs. If like any point of the day women's boobs are put in front of my face, I'll, if some came here now, I'd stop thinking about Confucius and this information about how to manage staying in alignment with a frequency of consciousness that might be more beneficial to you. Right, so this is like some ancient Chinese wisdom thing. Do you want a bit of ancient Chinese wisdom? The story of Butcher Ding is perhaps best known and most vividly, and the, the best known and most vivid portrayal of Wu Wei in early Chinese tradition. Wu Wei is not being all caught up in material stuff, being in the flow of the universe. The butcher has been called upon to play his part in a traditional religious ceremony involving the sacrifice of an ox in a public space with the ruler and a large crowd looking on. This is a major religious event. The butcher Ding is at centre stage. Now let's not get into questioning having a butcher centre stage at a large public event and that his name's Ding. It's ancient China. Don't be so racist. You're a racist for even worrying about it. In this ritual, the still smoking metal is bought freshly from the foundry and cooled with the blood of a sacrificial animal. And again, let it go. A procedure that demands precise timing and perfect execution. Butcher Ding dismembers the massive animal with effortless grace. Every touch of his hand, every bending of his shoulder, every step of his feet, every thrust of his knee. He guides his blade along uh, it perfectly in tune. Lord Wenhu is amazed and is moved to exclaim, how wonderful, can skill really teach such heights? Butcher Ding puts down his cleaver and replies, what I, your humble servant, care about is the way, the Tao, which goes beyond mere skill. He then explains the situation. When I first became, began cutting up oxen, as a child, the little bastard, all I could see was the ox itself. After three years, I no longer saw the ox as a whole, and now I meet it with my spirit, and I don't look with my eyes. My senses and conscious awareness, my senses and conscious awareness have shut down, and my spiritual desires take me away. I follow the heavenly pattern of the ox, thrusting into the big hollows, guiding the knife through the big openings, and adapting my motions to the fixed structure of the ox. In this way, I never touch the smallest ligament or tendon, much less the main joint. 
And the result is butcher ding is not cutting up the ox as releasing its constituent parts, letting the razor sharp edge of his cleaver move through the spaces between the bones and ligaments without encountering the slightest resistance. What it's saying, I suppose, is this bloke through <coughs> spiritual and meditative practice has entered into the flow of the universe and can move through life effortlessly, not coming up against resistance. Now, you could argue, I certainly was as a vegetarian, for the fact that he's using this great God-given ability to chop up oxes. <laughs> It's a terrible waste and actually quite cruel, but the metaphor is that we have to align our consciousness with truthful energies and if we do we'll move more effortlessly and gracefully through life, through the universe. It'll be difficult for us to move effortlessly and gracefully through life if the information and the way that we contextualise our life is like mad. Look, it's mad. What's going on? It doesn't make sense. None of this stuff makes sense. It's ridiculous. Look at Roy Hodgson. What are we going to do? We've got to find a way to transcend this information. Otherwise, I think we're going to be in an awful lot of trouble. Dun, 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 that was some truth. Dun, 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 dun. The truth this morning. Thank you. Dun, dun.